four, and we'll talk about the woman at the well. <clears throat> Remembering, of course, that what we have is, uh, a, 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 there are things that are described here. You write down all the things. You try to see the order in which the things are put, which when things are put in a certain order, they're called circumstances. <clears throat> and then you try to see the spiritual reality behind it and not get caught up in the things. <laughs> when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. That's a pretty packed statement, but I won't get into that. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey. Jesus, wearied with his journey. Wow. Sat by the well. And it was about the sixth hour. Then cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. <laughs> there is so much in this scriptures. You know that? There is just so much. It's unbelievable. Jesus, you know, first of all, you just see Jesus wearied with his journey. You know, we, you know we, we romanticize the scriptures. But Jesus got tired. He was the son of man. He experienced the same things that we did, so he was tempted in all manner like as we. It's also interesting that he being wearied with his journey sat down by the well, then cometh a woman that needs ministry. The pattern never changes. <laughs> you know, uh, I was talking with Todd a couple of days ago on the phone. We're going to get together tomorrow morning early because there's no other time to meet with him. And I was remembering when I first met Todd, went to Jamaica, 20th wedding anniversary. I needed to get away, got to Jamaica went into our room, put our bags down, went down, sat down to overlook Montego Bay, and just as I sat down, this person walks by in Jamaica, looks down and says, I know you. you. You play with a band down in the Prophet in Deep Ellum. You're a Christian. And proceeded to sit there and minister for two hours to this kid. Um, it's, you know... It's part of the deal. You know, we always, I'm, I'm weary because I've been serving the Lord. I'm tired, okay? You know, I mean, I can say that of me. I'll just be honest with you. I'm more tired. I'm, I'm just flat worn out. I go, I've been going constantly. I've been ministering constantly. I've been going physically. I've been going without sleep. I've been averaging four hours sleep, if that. Um, major ministry did last week have so far this week, uh, Jerry asked me, he said, because uh, he was concerned about me Sunday night, and I just laughed, and I said, hey, I've done twice as much since Sunday night when you were worried about me that I did up to that point, just from two days. Uh, if you uh, ever think about it, you know, it's probably good to pray for your leaders. It's, you know, it's probably a good idea, pray for your leaders. Um, but the truth is, you can be totally worn out totally feel there's nothing left to give and you sit down and somebody comes up for ministry <laughs> and Jesus, you notice what Jesus did, didn't you? Get out of here, you little punk woman. I want no Samaritan around me, especially not now when I'm tired. But he didn't do that at all. He proceeded to minister to her because uh, and he'll explain why here in a minute. He'll explain why he is able to do that. Because you did notice the wording, now Jacob's well was there. Now Jacob's well was there. Finally, now Jacob's well is there. Because Jesus, 
Jacob, what, what well did Jacob draw from? God. Right? He sure did, I guarantee you. So well that he really drew from, well, here he was, the one that he drew from. Now Jacob's well finally showed up there. It's Jesus. <clears throat> there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy food. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me who am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift, if thou knewest, if thou knewest it was a gift, if thou knewest, and then you knew it was a gift, if thou knew the gift you know what a gift is it's something given freely not earned it is a gift if you knew <laughs> you wouldn't strive so hard to buy or to obtain you would receive if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith unto thee give me to drink thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. See, Jesus is already ministering. <laughs> the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From where then hast thou living water? You don't have, you don't have any tangible things. You don't have any temporal things, any sense realm objects to accomplish this task. <clears throat> From where then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Which, you know, once again, yeah, I'm the one that fed Jacob. I am the well and, I, and that river still runs. Out of your innermost being shall flow. And that river still runs. I am. And this is what he said about Abraham too, who was the, if you will, father. Um, and he said, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Just it's always he is he is always there. Never ending flow. Doesn't have to start anew with you. You just have to find and believe that he is always there. And he doesn't. He doesn't change. You just enter back into what was. If you believe it, that's called a new beginning. But all you did was begin anew what you left, and you haven't lost ground. <clears throat> Not a fresh start. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. He's, he's, see, Jesus picked up on something. I'll, I'll get into it in a minute. But Jesus picked up on something here. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well. Shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. <laughs> Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband and come here. The woman answered and said, uh, I have no husband. Jesus saith unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he, he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, that saidest thou truly. Where, where, where'd that come from? Where's that thrown in there? The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, she's, she's making progress in her perception of Christ. And, and it'll grow more. This is growth. There needs to be growth. And there is growth. 
our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. <laughs> Jesus doesn't say that, but the Jews say that. But there is a place to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me. Isn't it a shame that Jesus has to say, Believe me, or truly, truly? Think about it. Isn't it a shame that the Son of God would have to say, Believe me, or truly, truly, I say unto you. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, Believe me, because it's going to help if you do. You don't have to, but I'm just presenting the truth. <laughs> the hour cometh when you should neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. And the Lord was dealing with me today on idols. And he told me that there are many people who are committing adultery because they have a love relationship with an idol that is not Jesus, or is not the Father. Maybe one day I'll get to explain more what I felt like I heard from the Lord. But, that's, I mean, that would be a good reason to want to know the Lord too. You can't be faithful to Him if you're not being faithful to Him. Because you're being unfaithful because you don't know Him. You can't be faithful to something that you don't know. You're being faithful to your idol. John said this in 1 John, I believe, 5. Could, could be the last verse in uh, 1 John. Uh, my little children, this is people of God. My little children, keep yourselves from idols. And that was round about the place where he said, that if you receive the testimony of man, the testimony of God is greater. And he begins to talk about the Father and His Son. <clears throat> you know not what you worship. <laughs> but they worship. For salvation is of the Jews, but the hour cometh. It's coming. It's continuously coming. And now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit. Not carnal weapons. Not carnal worship. Deeds, works, uh, actions that beg God. As if we can manipulate God into, you know, simple faith simple faith is a powerful powerful thing simple faith he loves it because it puts it, it takes all of that strength away and it puts ourselves in his hands and he says I've been looking all over just to find somebody that I could show myself strong on behalf of I, I, I like you. you you have faith without faith it's impossible to please which would assume therefore that with faith it does please him. And I know that it does. I know him and I know his heart. And it brings him joy because he, it, it does, there's nothing greater for him than to be there for you. Now I know some of you don't believe that or understand that, but there's nothing greater in his heart. This really is the way he is. It is. <laughs> there's nothing greater in his heart than to be there for you. But he can't, he can't continually be there for you the way you want him to be there, for that is usually to feed your flesh. So he's trying to grow you up too. Okay? In spirit. That's what he's seeking. You know the Father's seeking something? We always think about what we're seeking from God, but the Father's seeking something from us. The Father would like you to worship him in spirit and quit worshiping him in carnal means, and ways, sense realm, deeds and thoughts and actions. And in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth, 
The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, who is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. He will tell us all things. When he comes, he will tell us all things. John said, Beware of idols. She said, the, by the way, the Christ, the Messiah, was standing right in front of her, and she's telling him what he's going to be like when he comes. Beware of idols, little children. Little children. When he comes, and I'm looking for him, he's standing right there, and she's going, well, I'm looking for him, man. I'm a believer. He will tell us all things. Jesus, Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot, which is a good sign, and went her way into the city and saith to men, Come see a man who told me all things that ever I did. <laughs> Is not this the Christ? Not this, the guy standing by the well, but this, the one who told me all things ever I did. Beware of idols, little children. Then they went out of the city and came unto H.I.M., in the meantime, his disciples besought him, saying, Master, eat, but he saith unto them, I have meat or food to eat that you don't even know of. Uh, I'm weary. I'm sitting here on this well. <laughs> I'm tired. I've been pouring out. I've been giving out. And you guys got enough strength to go in town and get something, but I got food to eat that you don't even know about. eternal bread, the bread of life. You want to you wanna satisfy a thirst? Don't go running after Jesus somewhere. He's right here in you, a living well that will quench your thirst. And we're parched. We're the woman. I'm, I'm identified in Christ, by the way. That isn't a pride thing. That's the only hope thing for somebody like me. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not identified with the woman at the well. I'm in Christ. When he speaks, I'm with that. Because he's me, my head. I'm one with him. If you understand what I mean, I'm one with him. He is the one, and I'm one with that. <clears throat> Master Reed, he says, I have meat to eat that you don't, you, you don't know of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him anything to eat? Do you think maybe somebody's taking care of him on the side or something? Jesus saith unto them, My meat, my food is to do the will of the Father, to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work, to finish his work, to finish his work. Say not ye there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I send you, lift up your eyes and look. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. He that, he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto eternal life, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Big picture given here. Big eternal picture from so seed sowing to harvest. He that soweth and he that reapeth are one. It's all gathered in. But we or an individual stuck on a line somewhere doing our little ministry and rise and fall depending on how much we've done that week, that month, or how much we have not done and we're not one with the big picture. He, we're all one when this thing's all said and done. We're all going to rejoice. That's what he says. Didn't he say that? He that saw it and he that reap it so that, they, that, that they're both one and they may rejoice together. And here is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap on that which you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you entered into their labors. Now notice this, many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman. For the what? The saying of the woman. What saying? 
come see a man who told me every idea. Many believed on him for the saying of the woman. They didn't believe on him for him. But notice, for the saying of the woman who testified, he told me all things ever I did. So they believed based on her word of him, but not him. But look, so when the Samaritans were come unto him, because they believed and they came to him, but when they were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days, and many more believed because of his own word. Isn't that cool? Not her words about him, but his word. They got the word in them. They came to him because of her words, which is still good, isn't it? They, thank God they came to him, you know? Is that not our task, is to point to him? We're signposts, and they go to him, and they receive his word. If, if, she, if, if she or me or anybody else becomes the well of living water, eh, you see what I mean? That's a failure. That's a failure. You're to become the well of living water. She was to point to him because he is that, but I mean, he is in you a well. And so, you know, many believe on because of her word, which is fine. But the goal is then for that belief to bring them to him, to a him, to a, a person, a relationship, a knowing, a relating, um, whereby now, now we believe, in fact, I think it goes on to say, uh, many more believe, and, sa and said unto the woman, now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Isn't that cool? I mean, that is so cool. And that's it. I mean, you know, you can't build a ministry around a man, a woman. You, you must, that, that person or those people, the one goal is to get somebody to the Lord so that they might, so that they might one day look at that woman and say, now we believe, not because of thy word, but because we have heard him and believed him. And you know what? She's not going to be disappointed. She's going to go, yes! That's what needed to take place. Now you have a well. Now you're not going to have to run to my well. You have a well, and you have a well, and you have a well, and you have a well. And nobody will ever stop this now. But if you only have one well, one person with a well, and they die, then people grab the fragments of the well that has like taste left and they lick on it for a while it's not supposed to be that way <clears throat> Jacob's well can only sustain the old life that well could sustain her old life but the well that is Christ rids up of our old life and floods forth his life Jesus is the fulfillment the fulfillment of Jacob's well he shall be a well in you for when Jesus got to that parcel of ground, the Bible says, now, because Jesus was there, Jacob's well was there. The real well that Jacob drank from was God. Jesus didn't say, give me a drink, but give me to drink, because he was that well. <clears throat> she came with a need. She needed living water, but she was dried up. She needed water, and she was dried up. She needed physical water. She was dried up. She didn't even realize that she had a need. She knew she needed physical, but she didn't know she had a need. She didn't come because of her need. You know what I mean? She didn't come to Jesus. She didn't come there. She's just doing her daily duties. But she had a deep down need. She was dry. She didn't come seeking going, oh, reward me. And she didn't even know she had a need. Just because you don't see the need doesn't mean Jesus won't show up and help. All she had to do was ask, and he would give. That's what he said. If you would ask, I would give. And that's trust. But, you know, we ask, but we don't trust. Or we ask, but we don't believe. We ask, but we don't believe. 
we ask, but we don't really believe. But there is something wonderful about asking and going, okay, you're the Lord, and I have peace that I'm, into the, I'm in the shadow of your wing. That's this new place. The shadow of your, the, the secret place. It is. It's a very real place. The secret place of the Most High. Can't get any higher than that. <laughs> Can't get any more secure than that. The shadow of his wing. The held in the palm of his hand. You know, all these sayings. The shadow, does God have wings? You know what I mean? No. It is that secret place of the Most High. If you would ask, I would give. If you would have known me, you would have asked. Therefore, there's no living water because we don't know him. We seek from him a glass of water or a water pot to temporarily offset our condition. But we don't realize that the well is right there and that the well can be in me. We just, we're not even thinking in terms of a well in me. We're thinking in terms of the mouth and the palate, the need right now, the temporary thirst that I have a sense of thirst, and I need something to offset my condition. He's talking about not a condition, but a position, being positioned in Christ. And from that vine, all the root, all the fatness, nothing you can do to earn it, it's yours, freely given, freely, freely. You have received the Spirit that you might know the things that are given, freely given unto us of God. Hey man, I ain't going to make that void. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build my relationship with the Holy Spirit based on the Word of God and trust Him based on what that Scripture says. You know what I mean? That's going to be my, my relationship. It ain't going to be what I've seen in charismatic churches or Baptist churches. Or I'm telling you, I'm going to build my relationship on a rock, on the Word of God. And I'm going to trust that He said that the Holy Spirit was given to me that I might freely know the things that are given of God and that is my relationship that's already my relationship the minute I believe it it gives him the freedom to flow based on my trust my faith in him and I I'll not shut that off for any no amount of sin no amount of guilt will change the word of God you just don't have to deal with this mess but I will not release just because... See, we always release that. Well, okay, it's either God or not God. So if I mess up, I have to release all faith and all trust and all belief that He's going to freely show me anything because now I don't deserve it. Well, if He's going to show you freely, then you ne it never was anything that you did. But you're still trying to... you still got an, a wrong viewpoint, a wrong mentality, or a wrong mind. A wrong mind. You need a renewed mind. Your mind isn't renewed. You haven't received the engrafted word. But to receive the engrafted word gets in and then you become conformed to it. So you, you change here. You are being changed from glory to glory as you look in here and receive that. And you will. You are. And you will. But it's not like, see, what we're, what, we're, we're wanting to read the word and then somehow Jesus starts doing something in us. It's not like that at all. It is our mind begins to think the way the scriptures say and relate to the Holy Spirit as one who is freely showing me this because the word says it and I believe it. I'm walking in it and he's doing it. Well, when's the last time he showed you something in the word? That really don't matter one bit to me. The word is still the same and he is. I'm in relationship with him in this manner as it is written. He's not going to change and I'm not going to I'm not going to drop my faith, drop my relationship with God. Or anything else. I may be a son that's done something I shouldn't have done, but I'm a son. I'm loved. I, all that work that was done is still done and settled. And all I got to do is believe into the work of God, and I am back, you know. I'm back. Uh -huh. Now,
Yes, that's exactly right. Broken cisterns. Yes. Because they're broken cisterns, they'll never stay filled. It leaks out, it does whatever. This is that picture, this is the logos, the complete thought and concept of God, the never ending in the heart of the Father. This is a picture of the heart of the Father. Quit looking at all this stuff different ways. It began in the heart of the Father. This stream, I'm going to do it like this, flows. Now, now let's say this was all before time. God's Son, the Logos, the complete thought and concept, this river, this stream, this the, the, from which the well of it is, the Father-Son relationship here, is never ending in the heart of the Father. In other words, it doesn't break down and need to be re-pumped up, you know, with pumping stations along the way. This thing, it is... Uh, it, its seed is in itself out of your innermost being shall flow rivers that shall never run dry I mean all those things okay so that's that's just the way it is I mean it is that way it'll always be that way whether you get in on that or not that's your deal but but this is this is the deal because everything else is going to pass away but but since it's that way and God made a creation starting about here now this part is no different than this part to the Father. It's all one. It's just the river. It's His Son. It's the Logos. You don't, he don't chop this up in segments. This is the same as this. And it's the same water. It's the one. So, so when you start a creation and put time and linear stuff on there, it hasn't done anything to His concept at all. We're the ones that are so. I don't know what we are, but His, his concepts. He's solid. He's solid in this. Okay. So this river flows uh, past the wedding at Cana. It flows past Nicodemus. It flows past the woman at the well. And the only hope for anybody along this path is one who lives here, at, if you will, in Sychar and makes this trip back and forth to the well, wearing yourself out, and she's going, man, I, I'm tired. You know, I have a need, and that need is making me keep going, but it's never fulfilling. I never get it fulfilled. I only get it temporarily offset because you're only dealing with the surface of the need, not the real depth of the need. So you go back and forth, back and forth, and it's an endless cycle, and you do get tired. Um, and it's that same need that drives you to this man and this man and this man and this man and this man. You know, it's, a, it's she's unfulfilled. She's unfulfilled. Da -da 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 -da. Now you're with one that isn't your husband. And, you know, you're unfulfilled. That's all that it's. It, you can you can draw. I mean, we can start talking about all kinds of stuff. You know, that aren't mentioned there. But these are just examples that are given of somebody that is not fulfilled, and they're seeking it through temporal means, and temporal means can only can only temporarily offset. But like the need for drugs or alcohol or sex or uh, uh, affection or whatever, you let those temporal needs rule and you will, and, 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 then, and then try to fulfill them by any other means than Christ and you will build wrong relationships. Everything has to come from the source, from the eternal, tested. And that's not, you, you may, by me saying that, you may be reading that any number of ways, probably wrong, probably from an unrenewed mind, and it probably, in some of your cases, puts fear in your heart. It shouldn't. It is, it is truly God's answer. You know, he, he, he engineered you. He made you. He created you. He knows how you work best. You don't believe that because you haven't plugged into that yet, so you don't really know that. You know, you know that deep down inside because you're born again and your spirit bears witness, but you got a lot of other clutter that is the ways, the methods. This is how I do it, and, I, and this is how I do it, and 
you know, and I mean, it works pretty good so far, does it? But, but as Mallory said, something happened. And, and she rightly spotted the place. Here is a relationship between her water pots that she filled up from here, where she lived and where she filled up, and the, and the vehicle, her water pots, which was a temporal way to carry on. Temporal way to carry on. She left her temporal means for this. Now, see, what we would do is we would draw Jesus standing right there with her. But Jesus isn't right there with her. Jesus is an endless, eternal flow as seen from the heart of the Father. We draw Jesus standing right there and say, he, she left this water pot and went to this because we view everything linearly. No. This is just the continuous flow that hit the wedding of Cana, Nicodemus. It passes through and continues to flow and flow and flow. It is unending. It is always fulfilling. It never dries up. We, we have physical bodies, and they get tired. We have emotions, and they get tired. We give out spiritually, and we can become tired. Jesus became tired. But he became tired, sat down, and when there, when, when there was somebody that could draw out from him what was there, it flowed. Now, what flows is not us. Is not us. There is, in that sense, no weakening of me in that sense that comes from a big flow. Unless I sit there and minister to you for five or six hours. But that weakening is not really happening in my spirit, is it? It's happening in my body. And we do need to take care of our bodies. We need to be wise. We need to. But there are seasons, and I know I'm in a season right now that. You know, you, I'm in a season that you should pray for me. That's exactly where I'm at. Where you should not forget to pray for your leaders. Okay? Am I in any danger? No, man, look at this. I mean, I have the logos, the complete thought and thought. I have the fullness of this, of this rivers of living, you know? And I'm not in danger of... Um, you know, the Philistines plugging up the well. I'm in danger of being so tired I can't, you know, you might have to carry me out on the bed to minister or whatever. But if, if there's somebody that can draw out that, carry me out on a bed, it'll go. It's, it's, you prime that pump and it is full and flow, okay? But it's not really in this sense priming because he said it'll just flow. It'll flow. Okay, let me make sure. I, I really like the hit of all of this stuff. Let's see. Uh, if you seek him, he is the answer. If you seek the answer, you'll miss him. What I mean is, if you're seeking satisfying your thirst, then you're just trying to use him as a means to fulfill your needs, your temporal needs. But if you will maybe even sacrifice sometimes your temporal needs in order to seek him this is acceptable in the sight of the Lord it's called fasting I'm not talking about just food you understand don't you it's not fa fasting is not just I mean at least to my understanding it's not just a food thing you know you say no I will not satisfy my desire for that right now I will you don't do it in some aesthetic kind of way like well if I punish my flesh some people believe that God loves them more when they suffer like that I don't believe that I don't believe God loves you more because you suffer for him like that I believe that's bartering with God I believe that's a wrong concept and I believe it's another idol be beware of idols little children God loves you period based on his heart and his love and for you to go, you know, I mean, we've seen people go out on the streets and provoke people so that they would spit in their face so that they would feel like they're really of God or something. Let me tell you, if, they, if I don't provoke anybody and they don't spit on me and I'm witnessing, I'm of God. God loves me. 
you know? This, this endless flow. Uh, let's see. So if you seek him, he is the answer. But if you seek the answer, you miss him. Because you're just, you're still temporal. You're still earthly, that of the earth, earthly. You're still, that, the, the, that which is of the flesh is flesh. And it can't help but, you know. The carnal mind can't know God. The carnal mind can't know God. It, it is flesh. It is, a flesh. it is fleshly motivated. It's an enemy of God. It is an enemy. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. The, the mind of Christ. Uh, Jesus had to deal with her on personal issues just to raise her horizons on who he was. And he does that. He, he deals with us, but he's really trying to see us in a greater light than, and she did. She began to progress. There was a progression but the, um, on who he was. But the next step up for her was he was a prophet. God does miracles, but we can never know his fullness by circumstances and sense knowledge. Miracles in the sense realm. We, can, we can't know his fullness. She brought up controversial issues this thing about the Samaritans and the Jews and da 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 Convincing people over the pygmies in Africa is not the way. People bring up controversial issues and they want you to get in a big argument with them. The best thing to do is say, you're empty, your life isn't, you know that you're not happy. Deep down when you're laying there at night and you think about what you're doing and everything, you're hurting, you know that and a lot of people now some, at the moment, maybe they're drunk and at Mardi Gras and they think they're the happiest person in the world. But a lot of people know that you're right. And I've gotten to a lot of people that way. They're trying to talk about the pygmies and all this stuff, controversial issues, and you go, hey, we're talking about living water. Do you have it? And no, you don't, man. And you're working hard at this and doing that, and you're not fulfilled. You know it. You can, you can jive me, you can tell me all you want, you can tell me you're happy, but you ain't happy and without, without Jesus. You are not truly fulfilled or satisfied. So one night when you're laying there, whether it's this week, next week, 10 years from now, 10 years from now, and you're freaking out and everything's going wrong, I want you to remember what I said to you that Jesus is fulfilling and he is the way to, to satisfaction. Just remember what I said. God bless you. Walk off. They're empty and they are. Oh, I love this. I love Buddha. Just go. You know, some people go, you know, I'm happy with my religion. I'm happy being a Muslim and whatever. I've had people tell me that. No, you're not because there ain't no life in Muslim. There ain't no, just a bunch of, you yeah, ain't happy. Don't tell me you are because you're not. Um, do they have a real need and thirst for Jesus? The important thing is the Father, not where you worship Him. The person, not the place. The water I give, Jesus said, shall be in Him, Christ in you. A well speaks of depth. Depth. And this is what we, the church, do not have, is depth. Jesus described different kinds of ground. In one ground, it had growth, but because it had no depth, when it got into trials, are you listening? Jesus said these words. They're not fake. They're not, you can say you're good ground and be this ground, and what's the truth is just the facts. you just got to face it. Because they didn't have any depth. When they got into various trials, the Scripture said, the, it, they dried up. They didn't have enough. <clears throat> Paul said you must be, become rooted and grounded. This place, not just this Bible school, New Creation Fellowship is a place not just to win souls, not just to have church, but to disciple people in the knowledge of the Lord. You doing your own little thing, you coming off with your little concepts, you live in your own life and hopping in and out of the little thing to get wet and washed off and feel better is not what God sent you here for. You say, you can't talk that way to me. I, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those that God brings to this place. 
because that's what this place was raised up of God, not me. I'm, I'm just submissive to his purposes. All this moving in and out and hopping in and out and feeling refreshed and going off and getting down and messing up and, you know, and, and living halfway and doing your own thing and, or, doing, or living all the way but not the way just your way for God, thinking that that's bringing satisfaction to God, you know, and not fully jumping in and, and, you know, not dipping in, getting your toe wet and going, oh, I don't know, man. The best way to get in is to get back, run, and jump totally in and be immersed in the thing. But we all mess with it and we mess with it and we mess with it. I'm not angry. I'm just telling you the truth. God raised up this place. This stream right here runs through this place. Now, it does. It runs through this place. And God brought every one of you here and people on the video, people listening to the cassette, not by accident, not so we could just do our little thing or not so we could say, I'm really glad to be a part of something that's really cool or, you know, satisfying because when I get thirsty, I run to that well and I, that river and I dip in and I get my drink and I run back and, you know, but folks... You are here first to be liberated and second so you can become a liberator. Sorry, that is the word of the Lord. You're not here for you. At first, it is, it, you, will, you will receive the results because you will be liberated. But he's not going to liberate you for you. Now, I'm, many of you are here that are even committed that are given in whatever ways you understand that to mean. But you are primarily working on you for you. And that is a self-focused, self-centered thing. God wants to liberate you for sure, no question. But he wants to liberate you to make you a liberator for others. The time is short. You know that. I don't have to tell you that. The time is short. How in the world is he going to do this? He's going to do it exactly the way he did it. If, if we're way down here, he's going to do the way he did it down here. He's going to get 12, and he's going to put them together, and they're going to hear the word, and walk with the word, and eat, drink, sleep the word, until they're so saturated that there is no need for sense realm input of touching, healing, blessing, saying, come on, Peter, it's going to be okay. Uh, getting up in the morning and looking over and seeing Jesus roll out of the sack with you or whatever, but where he can leave the sense realm. He didn't leave nothing. You know, I mean, the stream's there, but he left the sense realm. Don't you understand? That's all that happened. He just left their sense realm. He, he didn't leave them. In fact, he became more powerful in them, didn't he? He became a well in them. But at first, it was scary for them, wasn't it? And they began to fear and doubt because they were so attached to his sense realm input because he would touch them and minister to them and feed them and heal them and help them. But he said, I must go away. And the Holy Spirit's going to come and he's going to teach you a new relationship with me. And that is you're going to be in him, in him. And you're going to get in this thing and you're going to flow and, you're gonna, and it's not going to be works and hard and this, the... That's not hard. I mean, yeah, it costs you time and energy, but what else would you rather be doing when you look at it and you say, man, it's, uh, I've done without and I'm tired and I don't have enough money for this and that. Consider the alternatives. Go work on a job to get enough money for this uh, so that you won't, so that you can get a vacation which you don't get around here so that you won't be tired. Do you really believe that those things, all which will do nothing more than immerse you more in the sense realm, will bring satisfaction? And I say no. You'll be running back and forth to the well. You'll be having these different relationships trying to find fulfillment. And there's only one thing. There's only one way. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And that's it. That's all. That's what you are. That's why he created you. At the beginning, he created man for this purpose. He made a creation for this purpose, but not. he made us a creation that was sense realm, but out of it, folks, out of the world, out of the created world, out of the sense realm, out of it, 
He has called a people called the, the church, ecclesia, the church, the called out ones. Those that they don't, they're not in and, you know, come and visiting the house of the Lord from time to time in the world. You know what I mean? No, Jesus said you're in it, but you're not of it in that sense. But I mean, they're not, they're not tied to it. They're not of it. They're not wrapped up in it. They're not, they, they know what they, you know, can you imagine the disciples, you know, going, okay, well, that's a good sermon on the Mount. Okay, well, we're going to go home for the weekend, but we'll check back with you next Sunday. Okay. You know, and Jesus going, well, it's kind of really not really what I had in mind. I was kind of wanting you to like forsake all, take up your cross and follow me because by doing that you will be liberated and if you do it long enough for a period of time with me then you will know me in such a way that I won't have to have you won't have to have my direct touch and divine intervention I'll go away but I'll be with you like you've never known before and you know what you'll be liberators you'll be now because you're liberated you will know the way of liberation and you will speak the same word that that anybody along this line has gotten Paul or anybody else, you'll speak the same word with the same authority from the same books because the truth hasn't changed and you will have simply plugged into the well and you'll be a declarer of the river that flows from that that has always and will forever be satisfaction to all that come along and you will hit temporal people all along the way and some will temporally drink of me and enjoy what they can get out of me but some along the way will drink and they shall, a well will spring up of everlasting life. They will no longer be temporal, but they shall be in the well and they shall, you know, uh, Abel. He talked about Abel right up here at the very beginning. And he says, man, this guy died, but I mean, his blood yet speaks. I mean, he's still, he is still testifying. He's not gone. It's not over with. Abel's right there in heaven, you know. At one place they were arguing about, you know, well, if somebody dies, da, 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 and Jesus said, what are you talking about? God is the God of the living. I mean, a Abraham is alive right now. David is alive. These people, they're, it's not over. They're not temporal anymore. They're, you, you, you're looking, you don't even know. I, I'm still relating to these people. We're all one. They have drank of the well. And, folks, that isn't just getting saved so that you can say you can be a part of a big thing at the end where we have this big party. As I said earlier, in the, well, the first class is we're practicing what will be true in eternity. We're practicing that right now. We are, we are by partaking of the well, going with that river that flows, uh, flowing with it. Uh, yeah, you know, this, you know, we talk about this, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. I mean, this path is ordered of the Lord, though he fall. In other words, though he go off here and get off seven times in a day or whatever, yet he shall not utterly be cast down. Well, I thought if he was a good man, he wouldn't fail. I thought if his steps were ordered of the Lord, he wouldn't fail. Oh, you, you don't even understand. Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. You're going to fail. You're going to screw it up bad. But deep down, you will never have truly left me in your heart because you're mine. You are mine. Your faith will not fail in me. Yeah, you're, you'll get discouraged and you'll go back fishing, but you... What is really connected to me has never failed me. Has never failed. You've never failed me in relationship to that. But you've done a lot of failures. You've done a lot of dumb things. You've done this and that. But you're mine and I'm yours and we are eternally connected. And the best thing for you to do is recognize when you fall, you are not utterly cast down. You get up, you dust yourself off, you go, I fall down, go boom, you know? and dust yourself off and get back in the water and it's like it never stopped. And that's the truth because he doesn't remember this anymore. And you got forgiveness. Folks, don't you see that? I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Don't you see all the things that you keep adding up are the failures of your life along the trail here? You remember all this stuff and the enemy uses it in your own conscience because it has not been cleansed that there was no enemy. Your conscience is made of God to condemn you if you don't accept the blood of Jesus and you got forgiveness, but you didn't let it cleanse your conscience. So you view yourself as a failure and one that cannot be trusted and one that could not really, really be used. So you automatically always hang back. You, you, you step back because when the word speaks, it speaks of Christ. 
And when you read the Word, you see you, and you can't measure up, and so you always hold back. And you, you, you know, I don't even know how to explain it. And, and you let all these things... But you know, if you get in this thing, the, the, this flow is always the same, and the blood of Jesus cleanses you. God does not remember that anymore. He does not. He does not remember. Uh, there's only one thing He's aware of now. And that is this flow which you are part of. You are in the vine. You are in the river. You are in the flow. You are one with it. And the, the attitude, the proper attitude is, I am in the vine. I'm in the flow. I am one with it. Lord, how can you use me? And I'm not talking according to my talents. I was telling uh, uh, Susan, uh, the scriptures, you know, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not given based on the strengths and abilities of man. Carnal. Given based on... The weapons of our warfare are not based on the abilities and strengths of man. Carnal. But are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Folks, where did he defeat the devil? At the cross. At the cross. Through death he destroyed him. Hebrews 2.14 That through death he might destroy him that had the power of the devil. That is the devil. Uh, uh, through him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Uh, Colossians says that through the cross he spoiled principalities and powers. There is no power. He doesn't get... You're not out here, you know, and one day I would like to have you in this stream, but right now you're not utilizing the authority I've given you to defeat the enemy and you keep letting him in and you rebuke him but then he comes back and you're not used that's not, he's not the authority is based on what jesus did that got you in here you are in his son now seated at the right hand of the father you have no idea you cannot be there unless this thing is settled god would not let you sit there one minute as long as you're screwed up as you think you are the cross has already done something. And it's done a powerful, glorious... And God, you know, Jesus deserves a little glory for that. I think. I think he deserves a lot of glory for that. But we, do, we, we offset his glory for the cross and glory in him to build up our emotions and our uh, endorphins as we praise and worship so that we can feel better and so that we can but we always go down after that you know you get high by endorphins and emotional high there's always a drop off and you will drop off <clears throat> but there is a river that makes glad the heart of god it flows um where does that river come from anybody know jerry the midst of the throne from the lamb that's seated on the throne, when you enthrone the Lamb, this flows. When you acknowledge, Lord, look upon me the way you would the mercy seat, it flows. But when you ignore the Lamb and His right to rule over your mind as a concept, if you will, then you have no strength. You can't defeat the enemy. You can't defeat you. Fle that which is flesh is flesh. And the flesh profiteth nothing. You, you'll never, and it has no power. Flesh cannot stop flesh from being flesh. And you can't defeat flesh by flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not based on the strengths and abilities of man. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And the, own, the, the strongholds, folks, are ba based on this guy right here and his individual means and methods and uh, ways he's come up with to defeat or to have victory or to relate to God. All of it's tied together. It's this interwoven net of things that have come together. But it's not God. It's not the Word of God. It may be religion. It may be what you've been taught. It may be what you've experienced by your relationships with your father and authorities, but it's not the Word of God. The Word of God always points to Christ and Him crucified. There, you are. the, the devil is defeated. 
Through the cross, the world is defeated. Through the cross, the old man is defeated. Through the cross, well, that's not the historical cross that you look to and say, okay, I believe that, and you know, it is the believing and identifying with that. And as you do, that, you know, and forget as you do, that's what you do right there. That's, that's what you're called to do. That's, that is your high calling. It is. The high calling of God in Christ. They didn't that say that? I press toward the mind of the prize the high calling of God in Christ. I mean, that is, that is that. You know? And, you know, and Paul, Paul said there in that same chapter of Philippians, that I may know him. I want to know God. I want to know my Father. I want to know the Lord. I want to know the Lord. And then he just spelled it out. He didn't say, oh, that I can know the love of God, that he really loves me, or oh, that I could know that God was, uh, w really did, will defeat the enemy through me. Or to, he said that I may know him in the fellowship of his sufferings, because you almost forget that one. The power of his resurrection, whoops, being made conformable to his death. He didn't bring out, other than the fellowship of his sufferings, which relates to carrying the cross, uh, he, I mean, in truth, he didn't bring up anything of knowing him apart from the cross. Because the cross was not an event 2,000 years. It was a place to demonstrate what he's really like. He's a lamb. And from him flows a river that, have you ever read that in Revelation, what the river does? It goes out and it feeds all the nations and it brings, uh, uh, what does it say in um, um, Ezekiel about that river? It brings life everywhere it goes. Life everywhere it goes. Everything that touches it lives. You know, that sounds like good words to a song. Everything it touches it Anyway. And so, if we could only somehow get us out of being uh, the woman at the well or Nicodemus or at the m wedding of Cana and jump in to this eternal reality and it is a jump in because it's another realm God will do his part God will do his part Ricky what'd you say yeah also <laughs> you sound like you said yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very sad. Come on, somebody else have a comment? Where is that scripture uh, that says uh, the one about the there's a river that makes glad the heart of God? Anybody know? It's one of the Psalms, all right. Psalms 46. Uh, 46, verse 4. Let's just read, let me just read all of 46 and you'll be amazingly blessed by it in light of if you see it like this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in, in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth temporal sense realm be moved, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, and all that is sense round be shook. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, thank God, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. <laughs> the Lord of hosts is with us. 
Wow, somebody here has believed God is for us. Is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. You know, he's called the God of Israel. It's significant when he's called the God of Jacob. The one the surplanter, the one who's always the conniver. J Jacob means conniver. So figure this thing out, how to get God with him when God was with him regardless. <clears throat> is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. <laughs> the cross. And the result, what desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still. That's interesting. He cutteth, he burneth, he... And then he says to you, be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And folks, I want you to know that's where he wants to be exalted in, in the sense realm. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be get done. In earth. Padre Celeste, que estás en los cielos. Sanctificado sea tu nombre. Banga tu reino. Thy kingdom come. Bring it. Come, kingdom of God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. There's only one way, folks. Uh, he ain't just talking about, I'm going to come down and whip everything. That's power. He wants to reign by authority in you, by you willingly going with him and choosing the spirit realm over the sense realm and letting that kingdom come in the earth. It's not of this earth. If my kingdom were of this earth, I would fight for it. But he does want his kingdom in the earth. He does want it. And if we have been practicing that, when he comes back and sets up the millennium for a thousand years, we call that piece of cake when he has subdued the enemy and all of that. Piece of cake. If you can live it now, if you can learn, if you can walk in his statutes and in his ways, Oh, how wonderful will be the time when he manifests, manifests in the clouds, sets up rain on this earth. We won't have to run to the throne room with our problems, for he reigns, he will reign in us. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Good stuff, huh? There is a river. There is. And it flows, and all you have to do is plug into it, jump into it, get a new beginning, go back to it, realizing it has never ceased. Never, he, his relationship toward you has never ceased. Accept it. Believe it. Act like it's true. Did anybody hear the last words I just said? Act like it's true. That is to believe it, and that's what a true new beginning is is when you stop signaling to the devil by your emotional state and your attitudes and you start letting him see that Jesus is first, <laughs> that bugs the devil. When he hits you and you just go, praise God, you know, and he hits you again, you go, man, I'm just going to worship the Lord. He, he didn't like you worshiping the Lord. When he hits you and you start worshiping the Lord, and then he hits you again and you start worshiping the Lord, he'll quit hitting you because he don't want you worshiping the Lord. But when he hits you and you slip a little, and he hits you, and you slip a little more, and he hits you, and you slip a little more. He can tell. He can read. He's the master. He'd been, he been around, what, 6,000 years or whatever. He's watched man. He knows all the signs. He knows the rolling of the eyes. He knows the fallen countenance. He knows this and that. But I'll tell you what. It is possible not to always walk around with a smile and the enemy know that you're plugged into Jesus. That's a fact. Listen to what I'm saying. 
We're not talking about faking outward. But, but there are times when the enemy is hitting me so bad, I will worship the Lord right in his face. And I do. I do that. And I love the reaction I get. But there are other times, man, maybe I'm tired and I can't hardly hold my eyes open or I can't, you know, I'm not going to fake feelings of, Woo, whoopee, you know, I'm going, uh, you know, but I have established, you don't, you don't do that overnight. You don't do it overnight. It ta- you have to convince the enemy over a period of time. But I have established, and I'm, I've got a long way to learn. I'm not some sort of authority, but I'm a little bit of authority. So I've established enough where if I'm down, the enemy has been around me enough to know I have not succumbed to his stuff, his lies. He knows who I'm with. If my feelings look down or my countenance looks down, he knows, and he's found it out enough times that when this happens, or you're sitting at the well, and he brings somebody that's going to really just crash you, and cave you in, and the well comes up, he hates that because he sent that person hoping you would cave in, and the well flows, and they get fed, and they get strengthened. And when he sees enough of that, even when it looks like you're wiped out and everything, Eventually, he goes, my God, it doesn't matter what it looks like. This person's with the Lord. And, but, but I'm going to say again, that doesn't happen easily. You have to be faithful to not go with the sense realm and not signal the enemy calling him in. And I want you to know that you call him in regularly. You're down and out, and the last thing you want is an attack of the enemy, and you call him in regularly by sending up a flare. And then you wonder why it just got worse, when how could it get any worse? Because you said, I am really going with my feelings now. And he will hit you with more or different to bring you down. And if you're already responding with feelings, you know, it's the old yes, 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 boom, we hit you. It's easy to go with yes again. And you will respond with feelings again. But if you have feelings and you say, yeah, I got feelings. I'm human. I'm not going to fake it. I'm not this and that. But I'll tell you what, Jesus is Lord. And just because I have feelings of down don't mean that Jesus isn't Lord and don't mean that he don't, you know, you start talking, honestly, you start quoting the word, doesn't mean that just because I'm down and my feelings are down doesn't mean greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world and I have overcome because I am of God, little children. And, the, you know, uh, I, uh, by my God as a refuge and a very present help, and you st- all you got to do, see, the word of God primes that well. And you start saying that and it flows out of your innermost being and it will start flowing and it, it becomes a flood that the enemy cannot stand against he eventually falls back because you, how can he stand against? it's not power that overcomes him folks we're so dumb we think the flood gets so strong he can't stand against the power folks it's the fact that you're not going by he's the king of the sense realm it's the fact that you're not going by your senses that he can't stand against it because he has no power in the spirit realm. We're always into this power thing. This is not a power struggle. God is God and Satan is a fallen angel. God can overpower. He's got more power in his little finger. And the greatest weakness of God is greater than all the power of man. You know, if this is a power struggle, this thing be over like that. This is a struggle for the hearts of men. Will they choose God because they love him and they choose to go with his spirit and his way, his way spirit realm, through Christ and him crucified, and to identify there and to win the victory by Christ? Or will they choose the way of feelings? And you can do that by just being bummed out and just going with feelings, or you can do that by trying to individually sense realm your way back with God by working or crying or worrying. (laughs) You know, amen? 
God, let's just go to 11 or 12. What do you say? Father, we just thank you for this time. We just thank you that you are speaking to our hearts. You are speaking. You are speaking. And Jesus, as you said, so you always will say, since you're the same, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Let him hear. Let him hear, Father. Let him hear what your Spirit is saying to this church. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, there's some, I, I just want to move with your Spirit. There's some that want to repent. They know that they have gone with the sense realm that they have embraced it they have gotten out of the stream and and they have sinned and you said that you forgive is there anybody you want to just me to pray and you agree with the prayer on that kind of thing okay several of you okay you just i'll just pray and you agree father i just pray this prayer on behalf of all those that have that sense they've gotten off they've gone with the enemy but they don't want to, and they're, they're sorry for that, and they ask you to forgive them. And they, now, Father, they believe that they are forgiven, and any time you forgive, it is forgotten. Now may they forget that they, that they have failed, that they have gotten off right now. Now may they step back into the river and acknowledge that Christ is their life, that they are of God, that there's no less of Jesus now than was before, that you don't love them any less because of failures, that in fact the river is exactly the way it was from the beginning. It, was the, it is the way it was when they first met you. It is the way it will be in the end. There's no less or more. It is simply the fullness. And they have, they, all they have to do is to receive it. Father, you said in Romans, they that receive abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Father, may they not be shy. May they jump in. May they receive all grace for all things and believe that it's covered now. There is super abundance. More than they could use up. More than's even needed for the task. Thank you, Father, that that is settled. Now, Father, that doesn't automatically erase nor does it ever in anybody their emotions their emotional tenor uh, but father their emotional tenor is not their government they are one with you they are one with you father when you look you see Christ and you see us in him and father we want you to know that this river makes us glad it makes us glad thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, may this class, may the notes that they've written, may the tape that is produced here, may every means possible be used to seek, to pursue, as the deer panteth, panting after the water, so may we not just to satisfy our thirst, but by the need, by the, the thing of being thirsty. May that draw us to the well. May it draw us to the well, but may we instead of just drinking, like in Ezekiel, step out and have waters to the feet, realize that it's all one river. By grace, we move forward to the knees to the waste until it's waters to swim in and it already is waters to swim in that progression is simply us trusting and knowing and growing in that which we already have the river didn't get bigger we just moved into it more father produce a commitment not to become better produce a commitment not to uh be something or to strive harder produce a commitment in the hearts of those that are here to surround themselves with the truth to surround not just by what, what I've set up or this church has set up or the Bible school has set up but by an act of their own will and a dedication for the truth a love for the truth 
May they create an environment of the Word. No man can do that for them. They must buy the truth and sell it not. They must put their priorities right. I just, there's some that this, the Lord's speaking to you on this. You feel like you can agree with that? Raise your hand if that's what you feel like the Lord's saying. Amen. Father, I thank you then for what you're doing. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you. May this spirit that is upon us now fill this place. May this room emanate of that spirit not just the holy spirit but the holy spirit who makes plain that spirit of hunger of desire of panting after you may people walk into this place and go i want the lord i want to know you jesus father may you deal with hearts that are cold, dry, wineskins that have not had the oil, Lord, rubbed on them. They haven't, they've just, they're just cold. They're just dull of hearing. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, for those hearts that are willing even now, as that song said, fall fresh. Fresh, fresh oil, fresh oil. You're as a dove, you're as water, you're as many things. Be as fresh oil on parched vessels that need to be softened. In the name of Jesus, if, that, if that's your need, receive it right now, right now. When I say when I said right now, that's when you should have taken it. If you didn't, then receive it right now. Say thank you, Jesus. If you did receive it, then you should be thanking Him right now. If there's somebody else. When I say right now, I want you to just like ha have your hands held out, and when I say right now, I want you to take it and thank Him for it. Receive the Holy Spirit and His movement right. Now, in Jesus' name, it's yours. Free gift. You got it. You got it. Holy Spirit, move. Thank you. Thank you. Om rarari andara bikita rari andara manarari andara bedindara di andai. O riandara bedindara di andara badundara bedindara di andara bakota e alla badundara fondo. O riandara badandara di andara di andara. For the Spirit of the Lord would say, Let not your heart be troubled. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, you don't have to let it be troubled now. Be filled. Oh, drink of the new wine right now. It's yours. It's new, so you're in there. You're born again. It's new. Drink of it. Come on, it's yours. <laughs> drink of the wine. Drink it. Drink it in. Oh, in your spirit. Amen. It is a scripture. Open your mouth and I will fill it. Receive it. It all is based on you just receiving of, by grace what is already yours. Hallelujah. You're like a glass that's been floating on the water of a whole ocean, all that fullness, but you're empty floating around on top. You just turned the other way and it filled you. And you sunk to the bottom. And you are immersed in the fullness of the river and it has filled you. Of his fullness we have all received, and that grace for grace. You 
And the truth is that you don't have it right now just because you received it, because you received it when you got born again. You just decided to, to believe into it right now, but it was always yours. <laughs> you are filled with all the fullness. You are already God's child. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't let it be troubled. Talk to it. Don't let it be troubled. You, you have a pattern of thinking troubled thoughts. Don't let it be troubled. That's your heart. That's your mind. Control it. Don't let it be. That's it. Be filled. There you go. Be filled. That's it. In the name of Jesus, be filled right now. That's it. Don't let it be troubled. You kick that stuff out. You cast it down. You can cast it down. You can. Casting down reasonings. Uh -uh. Don't let it be troubled. Don't let it. Don't let it. Tell it to shut up right now. You are God's child. You are of God. You are right now of God. Your father's pleased with you because you are accepted totally in the beloved. You didn't earn that. He likes you. He's for you. He is for you. He likes you. And what he doesn't like about you, he is very active right now on your behalf. He is, he is, he is your father, and he is active right now on your behalf. Even now, this whole movement right now is for you. And he wants, to, he wants you to see more and experience more than experience right now. He wants you from this experience to realize that he was for you before this experience and he'll be at, and for you after this experience and to not just plug into the experience and be glad for the fresh rain that has fallen on you and the fresh oil, but to realize that that's his attitude and the experience is only one point in time where he's demonstrating exactly, exactly the way he is toward you. He likes you. He's pleased. He's pleased with your progress. Yeah, you fail, but you get up. Seven times in a day, you get back up. Though you fall, he's going to see to it you're not utterly cast down. You've had enough come against you. You should have left God a long time ago. He has kept you, and he's going to keep you because though you have failed, your faith has not failed. He prayed for you that your faith would fail not, and you are following God. You've been following him. And you cannot fail enough to void out the cross. The cross, the gr you cannot fail enough to void out grace. You cannot. Grace is greater than sin. Where sin abounds, grace covers it. There's not sin. Your sins have not chased away grace. His grace has chased away all sin, has dealt with sins. <laughs> if that don't make you happy, I don't know what's going to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for protecting us. We... We don't deserve it, and we acknowledge that, but we put that aside now. Okay, we don't deserve it, but it's ours. Thank you. We're coming after it then. We're not making it void. We receive it. We come boldly into the throne of grace. This grace is mine. And, and maybe share with them. Is anybody having a hard time receiving right now what the Lord's doing? Obviously, the Lord's moving. Raise your hand if you're having a hard time receiving. Okay, we've got a couple of hands. Uh, keep your hands up, if you would. And those of you that wouldn't mind, just go be with them. If you need to share a few words, if you need to just pray. Uh, but you are a living demonstration of Jesus. You're his written epistles to these people because it's theirs already. It is theirs. Keep your hands up. we got, because I think there's a couple more people. Uh, if you there's we still got Ricky back here need somebody and Carolyn did you want somebody to pray for me? got Carolyn over here anybody else okay and the rest of you why don't you just either minister or plug back into the Lord and let him finish his work that he's doing in you he's probably still softening you 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Satan, I bind you right now from blocking these people. In the name of Jesus, you would do that. You would keep them just like in the Bible where you blocked people from receiving from the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we command you to cease this activity against their minds, against their emotions, but mainly against their spirit. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over you and we command this to cease right now. Father, I ask you to Pour out your spirit now based on the Lordship of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, Son of Man. In the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrected man at your right hand, pour out your spirit in Jesus' name. Pour out your spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, not just out and upon, but I ask for that, outpoured spirit in this place, but... I ask you right now, Father, to stir up within the Holy Spirit and His movement. Father, not just to counter the enemy, but to have your way, Father, through the Son that is within them, to begin to build relationship. In, in the name of Jesus, let your kingdom come right now. Let your kingdom come right now. Father, you can even overshadow our minds and our emotions by the power of your Spirit. If that need be, then do that. Flow, Holy Spirit. Move in this place. You are given place in the earth through Jesus and through men working with you. We give no place to the enemy in this place. We lose the power, your power, your authority, your authority in this place. We give you authority, and I, as the pastor, give you authority. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, move sovereignly. Move sovereignly. Move sovereignly. Deal with people where they're at. Deal with people according to what they need, but greater. Bring them into reality with you, relationship with you, Father, through, through Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, let your outpoured spirit be upon them to revive and to refresh those that need that also. If they need a touch in their emotions or sense realm, and that's what they need right now, let it be in the name of Jesus. Let's just begin to pray in the spirit, those of you that are available for that. Let's just begin to pray in tongues. Just let the Spirit of God flow through you. It doesn't have to be loud. You can do it out loud. You can do it quietly, however you want. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of you haven't prayed in the Spirit for a while. Let Him flow. It's going to be a little rough at first. Let Him flow easy, but... the 
river is within you. That's it. Trust the Lord. Open your mouth. Just let the Spirit of God flow. That's it. That's it. That's by faith. When you do that, the Spirit of God will start moving.